And I thank you all for joining me again, especially at this time of the year when we celebrate Christmas, that is, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of the family of Eternal Food Ministry, I want to say a very Merry Christmas to you all our viewers. God bless you. Thank you for all your support all through the year. We really appreciate you. Now, let's go to today's business. Today, we are going uh, on to a topic which is, in a way, a follow-up uh, on the topic we did uh, two uh, uh, periods ago. Uh, this topic is indeed something that has its meaning, its core meaning, in the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are celebrating today. And the summer is simply titled, Jesus, the author of life. Jesus, the author of life. And uh, before I go on, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have blessed you. I worship you indeed for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for the anniversary of your birth that we are celebrating, even at this season. Thank you for what you did, releasing and giving yourself for mankind to have life and life more abundantly. Lord, we thank you for this time that your people will hear your word. I pray, Lord, that the world people will hear today will make difference in their lives, even for the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let every ear that will hear this word that will come from my mouth today, let them be blessed richly. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Like I said, thank you for joining me on Harvest Feast. We have uh, some uh, ground to cover today. But I trust the Holy Spirit to take absolute control. And I will start by encouraging everyone out there like we normally start on this program. The Bible, uh, the Bible encourages us to enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, simply because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few will find it. You can see how light is. The real way, few people find it. It's not that they go on it. I pray today, even as you listen to the word of God, you will consider if you are on that narrow path, because that is the only path that leads to life. Amen. Like I said, the sermon today is titled, Jesus, the author of life. Jesus Christ, the author of life. And our Bible reading is taken from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, uh, verses 10 to 12. I read, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is, the, is in his is, is son he who has the son has life he who does not have the son of God does not have life the Bible passage is very explicit it's so clear I mean it's written in very plain English for everybody to understand but guess what because of twisted mind of people, they like to 
you know, make this Bible passage as uh, something that they will not understand. Some people in first religion, they will even say, how can God have his, uh, have his son? We are, how, how can you even imagine that happening? But, you know, like we know, believers understand that this kind of statement is deep and it's even more than talking about biological song. It's just the way God will relate to mankind. That's about the language we can understand. It's something very deep. But let's just take it on that surface, on the level we understand it, that God's Son has been sent to us for our own deliverance. And whoever decides to reject Him has rejected life. It's as simple as that. That's what the Bible passage is saying. Now, I'll just go a bit into some foundation so that we understand why Jesus Christ indeed is the author of life. By simple Bible, I mean, uh, dictionary uh, definition, an author is defined as a founder, an originator, a designer, an architect of an idea or a plan. You can go further and call an author uh, somebody whose idea is so magnificent to have come up with something something big, something that people will want to, you know, have. You call such a person an author. And you know what? Jesus Christ, being described as the author of life here, is so valid, you find it all through the pages of the scriptures. And I want you to, to realize one thing, that life itself has no meaning except it is lived in Jesus Christ. Now, Going back to Genesis, we know what the Bible says. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the heart. The heart was without form, and it was void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was over in the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light, the Bible says. And God saw the light, that it was good. It was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light the day, and the darkness is called the night. And God separated the light from the darkness. The light God called the day, and the darkness God called the night, the Bible says. And the evening and the morning, God called the first day. Remember the resounding war, the reoccurring war, the light. The light is what God spoke into being. The light is in the person of Jesus Christ. In him was light, the Bible says. And that life is the light of man. And that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. We have to realize that Jesus Christ, the book of Proverbs says, He was the master planner at the creation. Don't get me wrong. God the Father, God the Son, the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Holy Spirit, the, the three of them, the Trinity, they were present at creation. But you see, the prominence of our Lord Jesus Christ can never, never be diminished in any form. Because God has given him the assignment of bringing about life. And guess what? He did what he had to do. And he did it once and for all. Back in creation. In the book of John, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5, the Bible says, in the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. This is he's talking about Jesus Christ. He was in the beginning with God, and nothing was made through him, and nothing was made that was made that it was not made, that was not made through him. And the Bible says, like I explained the other time, a name was life, and that light is the light of many. And that light shines in the darkness, and when it shines, to be honest, the darkness cannot overcome it. That is the word of God. 
That is what we are saying when we are talking about Jesus being the author of life. You see, the authorship of life wouldn't have come anywhere else, except from the power of God himself. The Bible calls calls the Lord Jesus both the wisdom and the power of God in the book of 1 Corinthians. So you can see everything is coming together, proving and establishing the fact that the Lord Jesus he is the author of life. Now, this season we are celebrating, the Christmas season, God be praised that we're going to have uh, a lot of merriment, people will come together for, you know, celebration and things like that. It is worth celebrating indeed. But what is more important is for us to know why we are celebrating Christmas. Christmas, to me, is celebrated every day. Why do I say that? Because I wake up every day, I know exactly what Jesus, what he did over 2,000 years ago. When he first came, stepped into, into time, when he gave himself, he was born like a, like a baby, the king of glory himself. And fast forward, time three years later, he finally released himself, saying that he came to die. Can you imagine somebody who was coming to life? He already knew when he was going to, you know, end everything. And yet, he released himself. I am in awe of that every day when I wake up. When I wake up every day and I see and look at what Jesus has done for me, I celebrate him. So I'm challenging you today, even as you celebrate Christmas, please, please, I want you to always remember what Christmas means. Christmas means the time God, the eternal God himself, when he stepped into time and he came from a human being, from a sinful flesh, he humbled himself, the Bible says. He came here so that you and I were salvation. And he has done it once and for all. So we ought, we ought to remember all the time that Jesus, Jesus Christ, has done it all for us. Now, from the Bible passage we, we read, that is uh, the book of uh, 1 John, chapter 5, verses 10 to 12. The Bible says, He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. We need to realize that the Holy Spirit of God who lives inside of those who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior is the witness that indeed they are his. This is corroborated in the word of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, the Bible says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Even the, even the, the spirit of God was in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of God, or of Christ, he is not each. That is the word of God. For the Bible says, There is therefore no condemnation. For those who live according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh, who are in Christ Jesus. Those are the people that are no longer living according to the law of sin and death. Who now live according to the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ. According to the Word of God. So that Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit inside of them, all the time, gives the testimony that indeed they are children of God. Still in the, in, in the same book of Romans, chapter 8, from verse 14 to 15, the Bible says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen? You see, each time I look at people who for some reason have fear of death. And some of them, they call themselves Christians. The only thing that really jumps to my mind is, do they really know who they are, if indeed they are children of God? Because it's so clear what Jesus did for us. If anybody calls him or herself a child of God and still has the fear of death, something is wrong. That person needs to check because the truth of the matter is that fear has been removed the moment you gave your life to Jesus. It's not supposed to be there at all. 
Because the Bible says in the same book of Romans that what the law could not do through the flesh in that it was weak through the flesh. God did through his own, through his spirit, through his only begotten son. And he condemned sin in the flesh. When sin was condemned, death was condemned with sin. So as a child of God, you have no reason to have fear of death anymore. And the Spirit of God inside of you always bears witness that you are indeed the child, a child of God. Amen? Amen. Now, the unregenerate soul or degenerate soul is already condemned, the Word of God says. They are condemned to death by their sinful nature. The sentence of death through sin has been removed, like I said, for those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. So why are you having fear? You are not supposed to have any fear, the word of God says. Romans 8, chapter 16 says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Guess what? The Bible for that says, in Ephesians chapter 1, this is still talking about the stamping of our life with the Spirit of God, the sweet Holy Spirit, so that we know that we know that we know we belong to Him. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, In Him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, with the guarantee of inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory you know what each time i hear some christians and then they talk about salvation and they will want to say maybe salvation is something you have to work for because they don't believe that until they close their eyes and see where they're going they don't believe whether they will make heaven or not. Sometimes I, I wonder what version of Bible they are reading. Or if they have been listening to some sermons from the pit of hell. Because that is nowhere found in the word of God. Actually, it is contrary to the word of God. By saying so, you are saying what Jesus did on that cross was nothing to talk about. Then you are preaching false gospel. That is what you're preaching. If you know what you're doing, please check your Bible very well. Jesus did it once and for all. And it's for everyone who will believe in him, the Bible says, shall be saved. Amen. And you know, the decision to refuse Jesus, to refuse Jesus as Lord is the decision to call God a liar. For whoever follows other gods rejects the gate of eternal life. And by default, they accept eternal damnation, unfortunately. Unfortunately. See what the Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. The Bible says, and he said to them, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, giving the great uh, commission, go into the, the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Actually, the book of John renders it differently for our own understanding. That whoever does not believe is already condemned. So that's, and that's what the Bible is saying. That broad is the way. Broad is the gate. And wide is the way that leads to death, destruction. And many people go in by it. So when people refuse the Lord Jesus Christ, they are already on that broad way to eternal damnation, unfortunately. And I, I want to just uh, encourage you today, if you are listening to me, please do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Please know what the Bible says. That whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's just pulling from your heart. And the deal is done. You can't remain from your bottom of your heart. 
that indeed Jesus Christ is Lord and the day is done. The Bible says, see, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, this is corroborating Jesus Christ being the life. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and the name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A son has been given. To us, a child is born. But indeed, God gave a son. And that's why the Bible says, in John 3, 16, the Bible says, this is so clear, and I don't want us to confuse this each time we read this uh, Bible passage. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Just oppose that with Isaiah 9, 6. You see, this is so clear, but people want to just, for some reason, twist it in their own understanding. This is God giving us this eternal life. And that is why Jesus Christ is the author of life. Simple and plain. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 say, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us unto the kingdom, kingdom of the Son of His love, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Let me be honest with you. The gospel is so plain that people, one to one way or the other, make it confusing so that they can continue to live in their sin. See, and this is the gospel, that God changed the eternal address of mankind from eternal damnation to eternal life through the sacrifice of, only, of his only begotten son. Jesus was born to die for the sin of the whole world. And whoever confesses Jesus as Lord and Savior receives this testimony to their hearts and receives this testimony to their hearts, they will be saved. That's the word of God. The word of God is straightforward and is simple. The testimony is God has given his only begotten son. You have to receive that testimony and believe it, what God has done. And you are saved for all of eternity. That is the word of God. There's nothing to be misunderstood if only we want to keep our hearts open to receive. Receive the word of God and live. That's what the Bible says. Jesus said, I am the resurrection of, and, and life. He will believe in me or comes to me. Though he may be dead, he will live. And he who believes in me and is living already will live forever. That is the word of God. Trusting in him alone is all we need to do. If that is all we need to do. The word of God is living and is powerful. Hallelujah. Regardless of your position, your education, if you are worthy or not, if you have authority or you don't have authority, you might even be at the top echelon of uh, government uh, offices. You might be president of a country. You might be just whatever you may want to think of. Name it. If you do not have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want you to know one thing. You are empty. Empty as an empty barrel. That is the truth. And God, in his infinite masses, he has given us us as children of God. So that we don't just think, uh, all these things, we're just thinking it up. What is that? He has given us hope. From his word, we can receive hope every day. And we know the truth because the Spirit bears us witness, indeed, that we have eternal hope. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, in John chapter 14, from verse 1 to 6, said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself. That where I am, you may be also. And the way, you may know. It doesn't get better than that. 
It doesn't get better than that. He did not just give us life. He also gave us a guarantee of life in the person of the Holy Spirit. That we know, that we know. Even as the Spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit, quickened his body from that grave on the third day, the same way that spirit that we carry will quicken our mortal body. We will not remain this way. In the spirit of a second, we will be transformed. And this old corruptible will give way for incorruptible. We have a hope that can never be compared to anything that we may go through here or not, the Bible says. So let's remain focused. Let's know that the gift of life, the gift of eternal life that we have received in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, nothing we can compare to anything else because God has given the best gift anybody can imagine. The Bible says in John 1, in John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, a name was life, and the life was the light of man. Let's see that. When we are in Jesus, we are in the light. We are in the light. Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world. Whoever comes to me will not walk in the darkness of, 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 of in the darkness anymore. They will walk in the light of life. He is the life. He is the life giver. He's the only person that has authority over life that can give life. And that is the Lord Jesus. Amen. We need to realize. We need to realize what God has done for us. And like the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is expected. And really, much will be required. For those people who are given their lives to Jesus, who know the value of being a child of God, I want to challenge you. Are you just sitting back, enjoying yourself, even as the Holy Spirit is telling you, what you need to do regarding your primary assignment, the Great Commission. You want to take Great Commission to be something that will be at, at, at the back burner whenever you feel like. I'm telling you the truth. God is just. People who have given their life to Jesus or who are giving their life even as I speak, they will make it to heaven. But the truth of the matter is, getting to heaven does not mean you get reward. You should know that. And you want, Jesus wants his reward for every one of us. And that's why he encourages us through his word that we be productive. We don't live empty life. That is very important. That is very important. We can see when people, when they try to philosophize, sometimes they're trying to conjecture, they're trying to theorize the truth of the word of God. They think they are smart. But the truth of the matter is the Bible has described everything anybody can say with human wisdom to condemn the truth of the word of God. For the Bible says, since the world in its wisdom did not know God. The world in its wisdom did not know God. And I still say, the world in its wisdom does not know God. It has pleased God to use the foolishness, quote and unquote, of the preaching of the, of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To save those who will, come to, who will come to him. It has pleased God to do that. So, the Bible says, who is the wise? Who is the scribe? Who is the disputer of this age? Talking about you professors. Talking about you, you think you've been to one school, you, you know more, you can do this, you can do that. The more you try to to, to dispel the truth of the word of God, the more of a fool you become. Because that is the truth of the word of God. Let me talk to you about somebody that I know who I can call a multidisciplinary professor. His name is Solomon. He did not only have wisdom, it was godly wisdom. Not the wisdom as the, as, the, as the world will give. He had it all. And he had wealth untold. Let's hear what he concluded with all his wisdom. Because he lived both sides, trusting God and going his own way. 
it was able to just oppose to see what makes sense. Here, what you have to see in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. You see, underline that phrase, for this is man's all. That's very deep. You are here for one thing. Fear God. I'm not talking about uh, some trembling fear that has no purity to it. That's not what I'm talking about. The fear of the Lord is pure, the word of God says. And keep his commandment. Obey the word of God. That is all a man or a woman is supposed to do. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 12, there's a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him. But at the end of it, it is the way of death. Have you considered that? That most of the things that appear so easy in life, guess what? They lead to heartache. It's the way of death. And Proverbs, in chapter, chapter 14, verse 14 says, The black cider, at the black cider in heart, people or somebody that backslides from within the heart, will be filled with his own ways. But a good man will be satisfied from above. Are you a backslider in heart or at heart? Is your way aligning with the way of God? Or have you chosen to live your own way? I want to encourage you or challenge you to see the truth and turn around and observe what the word of God is saying. The lie has been given to mankind. People on their own volition, they reject life and they go for death, unfortunately. Are you choosing to live or die? And when I'm saying die, I'm not talking about just dying physically. I'm saying, are you choosing to live for all of eternity or die for all of eternity? Because the natural death is the first one. The second death is the separation from God Almighty himself for all of eternity. I want you to think deeply. The Bible says, what is it that a man or a woman can exchange for his or her soul? Your soul is so precious that you see all these things in the world. You want to make those things, things that you will settle with. That means you are trivializing yourself. You are reducing yourself to something very, very infinitesimal. Something that has no eternal value. Everything that will be bound up, the word of God says. Where are you laying your treasures? Believers, I'm challenging you this day. Where are you laying your treasures? Here on earth, where mouth, caterpillar, and all insects will destroy? Or are you laying your treasure in heaven? Where there will be no destruction upon your treasure. I challenge you this day. To consider your way and do what is right. For those who are yet to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I implore you, consider your way. As I be rounding up to pray a prayer, a link will be coming on the screen. And if you click on that link, it will take you to a page that we have especially prepared for you. This page explains the meaning of coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Receiving salvation. Follow step by step. And I trust the Holy Spirit will meet you there. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that the, the Lord raised him from the dead, that you'll be saved. Because with your mouth you make confession unto salvation. Bear with your heart. You believe unto righteousness. That's the word of God. And in verse 13 of that Bible passage, the Bible says, Whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. As you go to that page, I encourage you, call upon the name of the Lord. 
and confirm everything I've been saying and begin to see how you can have life from the author of life himself. God bless you. It's time to pray. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Father Lord, we thank you for your word that has come to your people. Thank you, Lord, for indeed you have given us life and life more abundantly. I pray for all those people who are yet to receive life by coming into relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that their eyes will be open, that the word that they have heard today will mix with faith in their hearts, and they will do the right thing by committing their lives. And for those people who have already committed their lives, I pray they will continue to press in, to know more and to grow in, in the Lord Jesus Christ so that they will not live empty lives, even here on earth, so that they will have rewards in heaven. Thank you, my Lord and my Savior, in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen and amen. And I will see you next time on this program. Until then, remain blessed. <laughs>